Hey y'all, Billy from Permapastures Farm. We get asked all the time, how do we move pigs in such difficult terrain? We're gonna show you a new way to do it, and it's a way that we've been doing it for a while, so you wanna stick around for that. You don't think it's possible? These days, anything's possible, y'all. We can hand out crack pipes in the middle of Black History Month. How about that? See these guys? They're on the side of a doggone mountain. That's how we do it. Okay, today is moving day for them, and we're gonna spend a fair amount of time discussing that. But first, just like William did in the last video, because we've had confusion about how these guys moved and the way they move, we're gonna talk about it on paper, and then we're gonna come out here and show you in the field how it's done, because the way we do it is a lot different than anybody else out there, and we think it's easy. So, hang loose. All right, so we're gonna take the party from uphill to down here and put it on paper so I can, I think this has been one of the biggest problems explaining a lot of the grazing we've done down the field. So we're not gonna make that mistake today. We're gonna to use this blackboard and I'm gonna to explain to you exactly how we do it. Now pretend this whole board is the area we're gonna graze, right? And let's just say the pigs are in this paddock. Now you got other people that make paddocks. They could be permanent or otherwise, you know? Pigs go in this direction, this direction, they hit this paddock. Let me draw that a little bit better. They go on and so forth and you know, they come around. Okay, you get the point. But now, the way we're doing this today, okay, forget all the squiggly lines. It's kind of cold out here, so maybe it's not showing up. Okay. Imagine this is the area we're going to graze. Now keep in mind, I'm not going to draw it into squares because in truth, it doesn't always work out that way. But this, let's say this represents my fence, depending on the topography, okay? Because in these mountains, this is legitimately where it is. We'll situate their house on the edges, okay? All things great happen in permaculture on the edges, okay? So they got their house, they got their water right here. How cool is that? Isn't this a lovely place for a pig? Now, instead of moving this, let's say we set up another paddock with a net. And let's say it's shaped like this because in actuality, in these mountains, that's exactly how it's gonna look. But instead of moving the entire kit and caboodle from here to here, we're gonna take this fence, we're gonna get them over here, we're gonna feed them right here in this spot, right? And while they're occupied, we're gonna take this fence and we're gonna shorten it up. Now, I got a whole nother extra fence. So this is my new paddock, right? So what we're gonna to do today is that while they're, we're gonna not feed them here. Now that we got them halved up, we're gonna feed them back here. While they're occupied there, we're gonna take their fence, the extra that we had from back here, we're gonna take that, make a whole new paddock. So then, the pigs will go in the here. They'll get a brand new paddock without them ever even have to move. So we're gonna feed them back here and this will be the new paddock. And then we'll do it over and over again. Just remember y'all, your paddocks, I know we, it's easier to draw things in a square, but in actuality, depending on your topography, depending on outcroppings, rock outcroppings, things like that, like tactical redneck we talked about in the previous video, your paddock may look like this and there ain't nothing wrong with it. Don't think it has to be in squares and circles. Name one thing in nature, nature that comes in a straight line. Yeah, you can't find it, except maybe the horizon. And even that ain't in a straight line. But that's how your paddocks may look. Just pick it up where you left off. Easy peasy, let's go do it. Okay, like I showed you on paper, we don't just move entire paddocks, although that's entirely possible. We're gonna basically, we've already taken, <laughs> we've already taken half of it. We got them on three nets. We already closed them in on two nets. Now, at my feet right here, you can see the third net. Now, I spent a little bit of time whacking through, up through here with a machete. And it didn't take but maybe 15 minutes at the most to get them a new place to put up. So what we're gonna do, and this is, this is pretty cool and important. We're gonna run that fence at the top, come all the way around, come back around here, disconnect it up there, and then tie it in with the new fence. We're gonna show you how that's done. So where we are right now, well, this pig's up here playing around, playing like, oh, I'm so hungry I died already. <laughs> While he's doing that, we're gonna go ahead 
get this net set up long before we're ready to actually feed them. We're gonna get it as far as we can go. And then we're gonna feed them on that side, just like I showed you on paper. We're gonna feed them on that side. And then we're not just gonna go immediately to putting up the fence. We're gonna wait about a minute or two. And I'm using things, and this is important when you use this method that we do, it's important that when you feed them something, it has to be small. It can't be something they can just gobble up. They gotta work for it because you need to buy yourself a little bit of time when they're doing this. All right, that said, y'all, I'm gonna grab this net, commence to putting it up at the top, and then we'll work our way down and get these guys and gals moved. All right, y'all, I done worked my way through there. Now, I am gonna have to go back at some point, like we always do, and put some of these in. These guys are starting to get hungry, but hey. Now, and by the way, as a, as a little side note, I fed them a lot less last night, so I know they're hungry today because I need them to stay where they are and not be running out of the fence. Now, if they do, it's not too big a deal because I know I can always get them back at this point with a bucket. So it's not a big deal. This fence is hot, they know to the respect that that's as far as they're gonna go. But in a nutshell, what's gonna happen now, we're gonna walk over there and feed them. When they're occupied, we're gonna wait a little bit, we're gonna wait a minute, turn the fence off. They're gonna be so busy worried about their food, they're not worried about much else. Then we're gonna come up here where that fence was connected at the top, take it loose. Now I got way too much fence here, I got way too much, which is fine, because I can overlap this thing and we'll show you how we do that. Now that they're over, listen to that. Yep. You know what they're eating? All these nuts. That's what they do. They're sitting here wiping this out. And check this out, folks, on another note. So you see all this tiny silver grass over here? Every single bit of that. Everybody around here calls it invasive. And I guess to a certain extent it is, especially if you don't know what to do with it. But it was all in here as well. Do you, okay, now look over here and then look at where they are. Do you see any Chinese silver grass? And in fact, when I go out here and feed them, y'all, I make sure that if there's area I want them to wipe out, I will take that rice and beans, whatever it is I got, I'll stick it on top of what I want gone. And that's exactly what they've done. Dig it. No Chinese silver grass here, Chinese silver grass over here. And then we'll come back after a while. I'm guessing about a week, judging on how they're going through this. You will not see anything here. In fact, take a quick look, take a quick look, and then watch it in about a week or so. We'll come back and try to, hopefully I'll remember to revisit this and you're gonna see exactly how effective these guys and gals can be. Look that right pig. Guess he didn't like that. Now in here, we got a bunch of bread. In here, we got rice, beans. As a side note, y'all, we've covered it at nauseum. In fact, on Patreon, I go into it a great deal. We don't spend a dime to feed our chickens or our pigs. The chickens are in that chicken tractor on steroids. The pigs are out here in this environment. Now, your terrain probably ain't gonna look like this, but it is what it is. So I'm gonna go on up here these guys and gals are very hungry and I'm gonna get on up here and get them fed but I just realized the fence is still on so let me go turn that off and then I'll get on up here What I know about these guys is that if I move too quickly, if I don't just sit there for a minute and watch them eat, they're gonna be like, oh, where's he going? Next thing you know, they'll be back outside the fence and then you gotta get them back in. I'm gonna go up here, disconnect this fence, bring it down, and it's gonna marry up right here. Check it out. Coming down this hill here, and it's gonna marry up right over here with that. Look here, when they root, they will root like into the fence. If you're not careful, they will root and pile this material up above the fence and then they'll be on the outside of it. Here's the ends of both fences. As you can see, this one is longer than it has to be. 
Don't think that it has to go perfect, just like I showed you on paper. If that thing is shaped like a parallelogram, who cares? It ain't gotta be square. But when you find yourself in a position like this, obviously you can't leave any gaps like that. So just take your string, and all I'm gonna do is very, very simple. All I'm gonna do, and make sure, once again, tie your knot on the outside. That is critical because I'm telling you, these guys will find their way out. So there we go. Nothing fancy. These pigs are well trained to this net. They know exactly how this goes down. We didn't move a whole paddock. It made it 10 times easier doing it this way. We move half paddocks, half paddocks, half paddocks. Now, all this is done. So now let me go back there because a lot of people have asked about it. Let me just show you what we do with the water. It's not gonna work for everybody, but here we are on the side of a mountain and doggone it, it works pretty well for us. Time for the water, y'all. Pigs see a bucket, they have that Pavlovian response, but all we do, bam, just top it off. Now it looks a little bit muddy because they just had their noses down in there, but believe me, that water's clean, got a little bit of vinegar in it, apple cider vinegar. But what we do when we're dealing with terrain like this, now ideally it'd be great to have one of them little bite nipple waterer things, but we don't have that and it doesn't make sense right now. And the infrastructure we're gonna require for this area, we're just, we got other, we got other fish to fry, okay? So what we do is just bury a five gallon bucket. Now, even on the coldest days, we find out that you might have to come out here and bust out a little bit of ice, but by and large, the ground temperature basically keeps it from, from freezing most times. Now, depending on the variety of pigs you have, this won't work for you. They will want to root that up. So in which case, and what we do, especially down there with the bull, is what you can do to keep that from happening is, and it takes a bit more work, um, but it's one of the best ways I know how to do it is basically on four to five sides around it, go ahead and put in some T-posts, enough for them to get their heads in and drink but at the same time, they're not gonna be able, they're gonna be less likely to wanna root that out of there. They got other things out here. If you keep them moving, they got other things they'd rather root. So here they are. This is it in a nutshell, y'all. There's really not much more to it. And for us, this is the easiest way to get this job done, especially when you're dealing in this kind of terrain. As you can see, this, this is not an easy terrain to deal with. It's not flat, it's not anything, but it just requires a little more elbow grease, but we're no strangers to hard work. Never have been, Lord willing, never will be. So there you have it, y'all. Move your fence in increments. It doesn't all have to go at one time. So remember, if you need anything, y'all, bone sauce, the world's best deer repellent. You need any comfrey consultations, check out the box below. Check us out on Patreon. We put a lot of good stuff over there as well. Till next time, this is Billy from Permapastures Farm, where permaculture is my passion, y'all. And it's systems like this that really make it, wow, is to catch me out in my, my view. See you next time.